Hey everybody, doing a barrel wood grain tumbler today. Uh, when I turn you down, I'll explain everything that I'll be doing and I'm going to show you the first uh, tumbler that you saw that I did. Okay, I don't know. I've tried to plug this in a different way. Let me see something. I'm going to unplug it from the actual power cord and see if that helps with it. Nope, that's not helping either. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about the interruptions on it. Uh, I did not get a chance to call the cable. But, but we will go forward and see what we can do and try to get through this one. And then I promise I'll try to get this taken care of because I know it's frustrating for you because it is for me. And when i am got my phone turned toward me, I can tell when the interruptions are and pick up so that you don't miss any of what I'm saying. But uh, we're going to turn you down and get started on the tumbler and I'm going to try to get you pulled up on my computer right quick so maybe I can tell from there when, when the interruptions are coming so I don't know no I, I checked to see about the Wi-Fi but um that didn't make a difference so anyway I'm going to turn you down and we'll see if we can get started and see what's going on I do have you up on my computer and remember if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and I will go back after the live or either tonight and I'll get with you and answer any questions. Now I do have another live this afternoon. So if I don't get to them today, I will get to them tonight. So I'm going to turn you down and we're going to get started. Okay. Now this is the tumbler that we did that you saw. Uh, it's a wood grain and it's a barrel shaped cup and this one that we're going to be doing today I'm going to be doing it a little bit different now this is what I cut to do the one you're looking at uh, I did my stripes in different sizes and I cut them out of vinyl and put them on put them on a white base and then I sprayed it with a brown spray and um, this is what I used I just cut a bunch of these to use um, and this is what I put around the bottom, the top, and these lines here so that you could see where they are. But that's, I cut that out of vinyl. And I put that on there. And then I put um, the Donald Trump sign on there. And um, if you're a Biden fan, I can make you one for Joe Biden. So don't get excited about politics. Just know that I can do either one. And I have done Biden and I have done Trump. So there we go. That's settled. Okay, now the one that we're doing today, I went ahead and did part of the stripes on it, and I'm doing it a little bit different. I'm doing my stripes with vinyl, and I think this is going to save a step. Um, this is how I cut the sheet of vinyl, just a bunch of little bitty lines, and it's not as time consuming, and it is going much faster, so I prepped my cup taped the top and bottom, then I sanded it, then I cleaned it, and then I painted it white. And then now we're going with these, and that one right there is a little bit crooked, I can see now, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to straighten that out, because I don't like it being crooked. So, let's pull it at the top. And you don't want to handle these too much, because you want them to stick, and we don't want them to pull off when we put the ink on. That's still a little bit crooked. Let's go back and see if we can get it to straighten up. Go a little bit deeper. Okay. I think that got it. Okay. Now what I'm doing, I'm just pulling these little bitty vinyl stripes off one at a time. And with this, you can make, you see I've got the boards different sizes. And that's the look I'm going for because I don't want them all to be the same size. And then when you just stretch that down, don't pull it too hard, but you want it to be smooth because you don't want ink getting under it. And then uh, I just take my X-Acto knife and cut it right where my tape is at the bottom. And then just, once I cut it at the bottom, then I pull that long part off and discard it. And 
and then mash it so that it's down good. And we're just going to do these last few because this part is very time consuming, but it's not as much so as the first one that I did. And I think I'm going to like this better because of the way that I can line it up at the bottom. It's going to work better. And I'll cut that. And it did take a while for my machine to cut all these little tiny lines. So there's another crooked one. I did that while I was doing something else and let it be cutting. And the cup, it's a little wider around the top than it is around the bottom. And it has that barrel shape and it makes it harder to work with as far as getting your lines like you want them. Um, and also the, um, the decal is harder to put on because when it goes around this heavy fat part of the cup, then it makes it harder to get it around the top and the bottom without it wrinkling. So that's something you really have to work with to get it to work. And today, um, uh, We'll put the wood grain on it, but I will not epoxy it because what I do, I put it in front of a heater and let it turn on my turner in front of a heater for about 30 minutes, and then I can go ahead and put epoxy on it, and I don't seal it. Um, I know some people seal their wood grain. I just make sure that it is dry, and that's the reason I put it in front of the heater. And that saves me some time instead of having to let it dry overnight. Make sure you rub those down tight because we don't want ink to get under them and mess them up. Of course, we're not going to pull these off. We're going to leave these on. The others, after I painted it, then I had to pull them off. So that made for a longer process and a messier process. And I think I'm going to like this idea much better. I kept looking at the other one and I thought, there's got to be a quicker, better way. So this is what I came up with. And I think it is a quicker, better way. Okay. Cut that a little bit off. Straighten this one out a little bit more before I start putting the ink on because I don't want to mess with it once the ink is on there. That's still not straight like I want it. And just take your time. Keep working with them till you get them like you want them. And if you notice, when you pick them up and you work with them and you stretch them, then they stretch a little bit longer and a little bit longer. So, okay. Now that's the look that I came up with. And now we're going to start doing the ink. And, um... Now the ink I'm using is um, Tim Holtz Espresso. And be sure and put on gloves unless you want ink all over your arms and all over your hands. And I don't. So I put on my gloves. And I'm not noticing the interruptions as bad right now, so maybe that's working, I hope. Let me see if I can get this light where you can see maybe a little bit better. 
Now the brush that I'm using is a stiff brush and it's sort of a comes in into not a point point but it's not straight across and I use this one when I'm doing the wood grain in planks but when I'm doing a wood grain just over the whole cup I use a larger brush that's stiff it's a chip brush so and this one I am going to be doing the whole cup so if you want to watch the whole cup with the um, wood grain process that's fine and if you don't want to watch the whole thing I understand because this is a timely process and when you're doing these cups you do want to price them a little bit different than you would price your other cups because these steps it takes a lot longer to do them and and we're going to start giving it some more of a, a wood look. And I basically, I look at my hardwood floors upstairs. And that gives me an idea of the wood grain look that I want. So, And you don't want to use too much ink at a time. Just want to use a little, of course, sometimes it comes out heavier than you want it to. And I think these little tapes are going to do good putting that vinyl on like that, and it's not as time consuming. And I like the the look better. Bit of idea of how it's starting. should have went ahead last night and the part that I already had the um, the vinyl on for the boards and um, done some of this part of it so but you can watch as long as you want to and see this done I've got to finish it so we'll sort of see what's going on with everybody but as you can see that's starting to look more like wood And I just basically do and work on one plank at a time. That way I can get it like I want it. And I don't have to go back later and go over it. Once I'm done with it, I'm done with it. And that does help it to dry faster too. And I don't see any comments coming across. So that's okay too. And this will be saved, so anybody that doesn't get to see it, you can watch the replay. And I do like to take my time with my wood grains because I do want them to look authentic and look as much like wood as I can make them look. And 
I wish this ink was a little bit more controllable. I know yours does the same way. You want to put just a tiny dot, and that's when a big dot comes out. And you want to make sure when you're doing it up around your tape rim that you get it up there. And if you want to do your cup top to bottom and do this same technique, you can do this without taping it off. But um, I know I've explained to you several times the reason I like to tape mine at the top and the bottom. The main reason at the bottom is because it does help if your customer drops it. Most of the time, it's going to catch on that bottom rim. And when it catches on that bottom rim and it doesn't have epoxy on it, your epoxy, the cracking, uh, is going to be reduced as far as it messing up the epoxy on it when it drops. Because I know um, a lot of little kids, I see a lot of people make baby bottles. But that's something that I haven't done and I don't intend to do because I know how babies throw bottles. And um, I just don't feel like they'll hold up. Um, I know my grandbabies have always, sometimes they'll do it just for fun to show you they can do it. And sometimes if they get angry, they'll do it. So uh, you just don't know about little children what they're going to do. I made some for my grandchildren in Texas and both of them and they were not baby bottles. They were sippy cups and they broke the lids on both of them when they threw them. And they're pretty good sized boys. We have three in Texas. And all our kids that live around here are bigger kids. 11 to 23, our grandkids. Ah, I see some questions coming across. And remember, I'm not real good at looking at the screen and answering questions while I work. I sort of keep my eye on what I'm doing. Let me see if I can look at just a few of them this morning and see. Okay. See everybody saying good morning and that they like it. So if any questions come across, then I'll... When I do get a chance to look at it, I'll try to answer them. But I love this technique. And like I said, I'd rather take my time and get it to looking authentic than to not take my time. And it's real easy once you get to doing it. And it doesn't take a lot of ink. You can see how it's shaping up. Got a long way to go, ladies. So like I said, if you don't want to watch through the whole thing, I understand completely. But this one, I will let it dry today because instead of putting it in front of the heater, because I do have another live this afternoon afternoon to finish one that we started on Monday night and then I have several orders that I'm going to be working on and I've got to go buy some paint um, of course the and I've got to look for some 24 ounce water bottles I will order for those today which I'll make a quick run to Walmart. Um, I'll have to do it after three. 
I'll check here where I live and see if they've got them here and I can run before three and pick them up. But if not, then I'll have to go to a, about 15 minutes away, see if they got them there. Of course, I'll call before I go because I don't want to make a trip just to be going when I don't have to. And again, um, the files that some of you bought, um, some people's having a problem with them on a Cricut machine. So if you're having problem with yours, please contact me. Um, I downloaded Design Space. I don't use Cricut, don't own a Cricut. But I wanted to sort of see if I could figure out what was going on when they were uploading the file to see what the problem was. So I got it to uh, load on the free design space. I didn't pay for design space, the business edition. But I got it to load on that, so uh, I'll work with you and see if we can walk it through. Uh, I use Inkscape for my designing, which is a free program. Um, that you can download. Uh, I have a brother scanning cut machine that I use for my cutting, but I don't do my designing on there. You can, but I don't. Um, most of you know that I started with cups when I was helping my son. He did powder coating cups, and I helped him with the designing and the cutting and the weeding and all that fun stuff, and that's where I got started doing cups, but I never did the powder coating myself, the actual powder coating. He had it set up in his shop where he could, but I don't have it set up here at the house where I can. But he taught me to the, di the design space, and then I've done a lot of YouTube videos to learn different techniques with design space that I wanted to learn, so... That's how I learn to do different things that I do with it most of the time is I just get a YouTube video and and do it that way. rather watch the paint than clean house. I think that's my problem. I told my husband I need a maid. Hadn't got one yet though, ladies. <laughs> but I need one. Now my granddaughter does come over and help me some when she needs some money. I think that's when she calls me. Nana, do you need any help? I'm trying to watch the screen, making sure I can get it where y'all can tell what I'm doing. I hope you can tell what I'm doing and how it's affecting. How when you pull on it, it makes these places in the wood, which that really makes it look more like real wood to me. Since I've started doing cups, it's something I just thoroughly enjoy. I said, I sure wish I'd have known this years and years and years ago how much I would enjoy it. Of course, I'm the type of person I can't just do nothing. Um, I crochet, and a lot of times when we're going on vacation, that's what I do is we ride. Um... I've done a lot of the namesake doilies um, for 
for other people and for shower gifts, wedding gifts, uh, Christmas gifts. And people seem to really like them because they're something that you can pass down, especially if you have sons with your last name. Of course, I think daughters would like them just because they were mom and dads. As you can see, now that's the way it looks before I start working on it. And then we start working on it to make it look more like wood. And I always start at the bottom because you don't want it. If you start at the top, then it always messes one area up. Where if you start at the bottom, then when you pull it down, then it just keeps working toward the bottom. And that's the reason you see me doing it the way I'm doing it. I stopped to try to read. I'd say that's why I can't work and read the way my computer's set up. I can't see it if I had it set in front of me instead of me having to stop and look to the side. Um, I told my husband, I said, I need a big screen TV so it's in front of me and I can hook my computer on it. And that way when I'm working, I can read and see the comments and answer the questions. I haven't got it yet. But... Maybe I will before Christmas is over. Who knows what Santa might do. And I did put um, wax paper down on my table, on the tablecloth, because that way I don't splatter the ink all over it. But doing this technique, it doesn't splatter an awful lot like it does when I'm using the bigger chip brush on just a full cup. Because it does sort of get everywhere when I do it that way. But I can see I really like this technique better than the first one that I showed you. Um... It was quicker to do, it wasn't as messy to do, and I let all these little lines cut out of vinyl while I was doing something else, and I've got enough to do several cups, so I won't have to worry about cutting them again. I just went ahead and cut a full page while I was doing it. And then I've got, I'm going to be finishing up the cup that we started Monday night. And um, I'll have to show that to you. It was sort of a disaster. Um, I should have sprayed and sealed the um, UV blue that I put on there. And I did not. Um, and then when I put the epoxy on it, it just all ran together. And then you couldn't see the peekaboo. But I did do something else and salvage it. So if y'all watch that, you'll be able to see where I did save it so I didn't have to do it over. It's not, doesn't look like I had planned for it to, but it did work out. So it's going to be a pretty cup. And my house phone's ringing. I guess y'all can hear it. But it's on the other side of the room, so I can't get to it right now. It's looking like. I 
This will probably be one of the longest lives I've done, simply because I didn't go ahead and get part of this done to begin with, and I'm sorry about that. I should have. There, so I'm going to spread it out a little bit. And you can, um, if you decide you want to, you can go in with a little bit of just alcohol, dippy brush and just alcohol if you want to lighten the spot up. But I like this color for a wood grain. It's a little bit different than the one I showed you. Um, I chose to use a different color ink on this one, and that way we can see what it looks like instead of doing the exact same thing. And I've been doing cups about over three years. I don't know exactly how long, but I really enjoy doing them. I did not start doing any lives until this year. Um, matter of fact, the first one I ever did was on this page. And Rick and Kelly is gracious enough to allow us to do lives on their page. And I know I appreciate it. That we can sort of venture out and see what we can do. And um, I am trying to get a group started that will be just a private group. Um, but basically what I'm doing with it now, just the lives that I'm doing on this page, I just go and share them on that page so that they're all collected there. haven't done any lives in that group. Just sharing what I've done on here. And you know, we need to share our boo-boos too. That's the reason this afternoon I want to show you that cup and explain what happened on it and show you they are fixable even when you make a boo-boo and it was my fault and by the time i got the epoxy on it i realized that's probably what was going to happen because i did not seal it and it was that real fine fine um glitter that i put on with tack it and if i'd have sealed it it would have been fine but i did not so it was my error but I did work with it and make it work. I know I've seen some ladies that say they never strip a cup. They always figure out something to do different with it so they don't have to strip it. And I can't say that. I've had some that were just, they did not turn out at all like they were supposed to that I've stripped. And I had one that I just had to throw away. I tried using that citrus stripper on it, put it on there three different times, and that cup would just not strip. 
I had put the glitter on with Loctite. Now, this has been a long, long time ago before I had learned about the epoxy method. It was either Loctite or it was either Mod Podge. So, I used the Loctite and boy, it locked on there and would not come off. So I finally just had to throw that one away. Got tired of fooling with it. And I'm pretty patient. But that really got to me after putting the stuff on there three times and it still wouldn't strip. you saw where that ran and dripped and the only thing I did was just go over there and brush it so it wouldn't be a a long stroke and these boards that are smaller it's hard to keep the brush just inside that board and that's okay because you can see what I'm doing to work with it and as I pull this down you can see where it's making it look more natural as far as the the wood grain and I may go back later and put some knots in this one and I may not we'll see I never know till I get through with it and look at it and sort of see if I want to put one in it. Usually I always put at least one on any cup that I do. And again, remember to always make sure around the bottom, you get it around your tape if you tape off your bottom. And if you don't tape off the bottom, then you need to, a lot of times it will puddle around the bottom. And you'll have to go back and work on that if you don't do it as you go. But the few times that I have done the bottom, I always drop it on the bottom and roll it and make it look like the inside of a log when I do the bottom uh, but since I don't do that anymore and I try to explain to the customer why and usually once I do that that's the way they want it without it being all the way to the bottom And I saw where, oh gosh, I can't remember the lady's name that did the um, plaid swirl. And it turned out beautiful. I'm sure y'all saw it this morning or last night when she posted it. It turned out really, but it was beautiful. She did a great job. board okay, I saw it interrupted a little bit right there. I hope it is is it doing better y'all you just have to practice practice 
ain't t really taking your time is taking your time is the main thing and I see it start going back up and uh, I probably need to do that because it wasn't fully charged when I started this and since I uh, loan live I probably need to Hopefully I'll have time and if not I can tomorrow while I'm at work remember I work with my son and he loves his mama so I can do some of my own personal stuff while I'm working with him. Okay, sorry about that. I looked up and saw it had paused and it said the internet connection was down. So that's the first time it's done that, so that may really be our problem here. is the actual internet connection. I'm thinking that's probably what it is. Okay, the reason I tape off the tops and the bottoms, um, the bottom especially, is because if a customer drops their cup, most of the time the weight of it, it's going to hit like that on the bottom. And if it's epoxied all the way to the bottom, nine times out of ten, that epoxy is going to crack. And then you've got a customer calling you back saying they don't know what happened or asking if you can fix it and sometimes you can fix it and sometimes you can't but it really does help cut that down because that way if they drop it it's not as likely to break and crack the epoxy on it uh, i have been able to repair one but the customer called me and told me that she dropped it and wanted to know could i fix it and i told her well i would look at it and i was able to fix it and you really couldn't even tell where she had dropped it if you didn't know but uh, it's not always the case it's not always that easy to fix but uh, that's the reason I do the bottom and then the top I just like the look that it gives I think it gives a um, to me a more expensive elegant look but if a customer wants it all the way to the top and the bottom, then I'll do it because I'm here to please the customer. But I do explain to them, you know, why I had rather not. And once you explain it to them, most of the time, then they decide that's what they want or the people that I have dealt with. And of course, the way that I take my tops and bottoms off, you can make them, a lot of people, if you've got a cup that has that line already around the bottom, they'll use that as a guide. And um, But I like mine to be thin. I just think it gives it a nice look. And when I first started, uh, I did them. Hey, look at there, we're almost through. Uh, I did them both ways. 
let's see we've been working almost 45 minutes well a little longer than 45 minutes almost an hour so and this is just doing the wood grain so this is why you need to price these accordingly because they do take a while and even if you're just a beginner um, once you do start selling cups you don't want to sell them for if you're doing a 30 ounce cup and you sell it for $20 well even if you're a beginner you're barely depending on what you do to it making your money back for all the supplies that you bought to do that cup and you'll have some people that you know will be ugly and act like you're ripping them off when you do a cup and you charge them that and you tell them what the price is and you know I just say well okay this is not the type of cup that you need uh, if you feel that way and you will have some people that may be in your area that will cut under you just to get the work but I feel like you need to charge for your talent as far as what you can do and what you can't do and how your cups look um, now when I first started I certainly did not charge what I charge now but I did very very simple cups when I first started and most of the cups I did when I first started I gave them away I gave them these gifts and um, gave them to family um, and I still do that some. Uh, I made uh, two of my granddaughters and uh, hopefully a future grandson-in-law one this past Christmas. And then the kids that are in Texas, they have a business and I gave them a 20 ounce and a 30 ounce. Surprised them with it with their business logo on it and they turned out real pretty and then I made um, I have a grandson that's in the band and I made a cup and styled it from his band uniform and then this year I got new uniforms so I made cups based on the new band uniforms And doing that kind of stuff, it gets your word out of when people ask who did that cup. And a lot of times you'll get orders from that just from them seeing somebody carry one that you've done before. Almost through, ladies and gents. And remember this one if you want to get to work on it pretty quick you can put it on one of your turners and set it in front of a space heater put the space heater about two feet away and just let it turn I, I, let my, I don't know why that came through um, but anyway um, people seeing them that will make a difference in you being able to get your word out there about what you do and and the techniques that you can do okay let me look around it but anyway put it in front of a space heater and let it turn for at least about 30 minutes and then you can epoxy it and I don't seal mine um, 
just make sure that they are good and dry. And um, the colors that I use in the ink, I've not had them. I had one cup turn green. And I'm trying, right now, I don't remember off the top of my head the color of ink that it was. But it's the color that a lot of people have talked about having problems with it turning green. Well, okay. That's the way it looks. And then... If that helps any with the light. Um, I will take it now and I'm going to just set it aside because I have got other cups to do. And I think I like this much better taping it off like that because that way I can get the boards looking more like I like them. Um, that's the difference. This one has some. I made big boards and little boards and so anyway that's all we got for right now and then uh, I'll finish this one in another live and I'll announce when it comes on so I hope to see all of you this afternoon about three o'clock and I can explain how I fixed my boo-boo so y'all have a good rest of the day bye hey everybody we're going to disconnected my phone uh, I had it charge it into my computer so man it's not going to work any way I do it I don't think um anyway we'll try to get through it and I'll try to when I see it's pausing catch up and we're going to be doing and finishing up the wood grain that we started the barrel wood grain and when I turn you down I will go over everything that we did through the process and just remember when I'm working I do not reply to any comments but I will go back after the live and I'll reply to any comments and answer any questions that you have. So I'm going to turn you down and we'll get started. And in the meantime, I'm going to actually um, see if I can pull this up on my computer so I can make sure that I've got the cup in where you can see it. So we'll see if we can make that work. And I'm going to turn you down. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Now I think, I think I've got it where you can see it. And let's see if we can do something about the light. Okay, now this is the wood grain that we did. And um, I'm going to tell you how we did it in case this is somebody's first time joining in. I always prep my cups. I tape the top and I tape the bottom. And then I sand it and clean it. And then I painted it white. And then all the little strips to separate the actual planks, I cut... A whole page of real tiny vinyl lines and that's what I used to separate the planks <coughs> and then this is one that I cut that once I get epoxy on it and it cures then I'll put a black strip here and a black strip here and then one here and one here now this cup I am NOT going to put any kind of a quote on it yet it's not sold yet, and it might be a hunting cup. It might be whatever kind of cup anybody wants that buys it, but I'm not going to put a quote on it until I actually sell the cup. But I will go in once I get the other stripes on it, but it has to be uh, epoxied before we put these other stripes on it because I don't want to risk having to move them around and pull these stripes off or mess up the ink. So if you did not see this and you like the way this looks, there is a part one, <coughs> excuse me, that you can go in and look at. So I did use uh, espresso, <coughs> excuse me, let me get me something to drink, just a minute. I did the espresso ink by Tim Holtz, and that's what I did to do the wood grain. And that's the only color that I used. So now we're going to put it on the turner. And I'll try to get it where you can see it. And this is one of Rick's turners. Um, and it's so quiet and so easy to use. So see I've got it where you can almost see top to bottom. But uh, when I mix, I always use spoons. I don't use milliliters. 
uh, and I've never had a problem with my epoxy being sticky when I get through. It's always uh, cures properly. So, you know, if I find a good thing, I'm just going to stick with it. And I always, when I'm mixing um, epoxy that is going to be for anything higher than a 30 ounce, I stir it for four minutes. And if I'm mixing something that's going to be for uh, 20 ounce, 24 ounce, anything lower than a 30 ounce, uh, I stir it for three minutes. And I do that because, of course, it doesn't take as much epoxy. Now, this is a 25 ounce tumbler. So, uh, I'm using what I would use uh, for a 20 ounce. And that is a um, half of a tablespoon. And this is Alumilite epoxy. I've been using Alumilite since I started uh, over three years ago. And I've never had a problem with it. The only problem I had was I had some yellowing when I first started doing tumblers. But then I found out that uh, I could mix this casting craft translucent blue in with my epoxy before I put it on the cup and it stops the yellowing. Of course over time any epoxy is going to yellow but this uh, the Illumilite when I first used it I did a cup that had white glitter and it did yellow pretty fast. So once I found I could use this casting craft translucent blue I started using it and it doesn't even take not even an ounce um, not even a drop of it um, to make it work so I just use very little and I'll show you how much I use uh, you can see there's very little in there it's not even a full drop. If you use a full drop, it's going to make it blue. Okay, so I'm setting a timer um, for four minutes. And I know this is a boring part where you have to watch while somebody's stirring epoxy, but I always stir it really good. Uh, I stir mine pretty fast. And then I hit it usually with the... Um, uh, Excuse me, just a minute. Let me turn the sound off. I hit it with um, my torch once I get it stirred, and uh, it starts taking the bubbles out. And I'll do that a couple of times before I put it on the cup. And then, of course, I use the torch once I get it on the cup. So, uh, let me see if I can see some of these questions while I'm stirring. Hey, Andrea, I see that you're here. Um, And I have been busy. I've had a lot going on. Um, if you need anything else, you just let me know. You get on the list now because probably I'm thinking I may cut off orders somewhere around the middle or close to the end of November. Uh, I've got so many going on now. And uh, I do plan to have a Christmas bazaar cup sale online. I did not get to go to any craft shows this year and the cups that I've been making uh, that were not orders um, I will be selling those so I will be doing a cup bazaar so that's going to take a little bit of time uh, because I want them all ready to sell tumblers, ready to ship tumblers and then that way if anybody does want a name or a monogram or something on them I can do that, but I want all of them ready to ship so the people will get them by Christmas. So that's one of my goals. But, um, and I'm looking at a, possibly a new venture with a, a new glitter company that has some beautiful glitters that we're going to be working with. And we'll add them to the vendor list in this group. And, um, so we do have that in the announcements. Uh, if you want to go to the announcements, there's a list there of uh, different vendors that you can use for cups and glitters and, and 
anything like that that you think you might need. But this will be uh, where it can be replayed. And uh, if you have not seen the first part one, I would suggest you go back and watch that. And you can get a good clear idea of how I did the wood grain. And uh, if it's a technique you like, then you can work with it and develop it to where it works for you. Um, I do these a little bit different when I'm doing the planks than I do when I'm doing just a, a totally wood grain tumbler. Uh, I use a smaller brush when I'm using and putting it in between here in the, uh, the planks. So... The smaller brush makes it easier when you're working in the planks. This is just about done. And today is a time of day that uh, people are not used to me going live. I usually do my lives about 9 o'clock at night um, on Monday nights. And then sometimes I do it uh, alive. Um, Wednesday night for the second part to finish a tumbler. I work on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I can do lives on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay, that four minutes is up. And you can see after four minutes all the bubbles that are in there. So I'll let it sit just a little bit and let a few of them come to the top, and then I'll hit it with a torch. And then let it set a little bit more and then hit it with a torch again. Hey, Snooks. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I've had a lot of flubs, just like everybody else. So, uh, sometimes it happens. And that's okay, too, because that's how we learn. Um, if you don't have some that mess up, then I know... Um, when I was in banking, one of my bosses told me, said, well, if you don't have some bad loans, you're not working and doing enough loans because you're going to have some that are going to be bad. And um, so I feel that way with cups. If you're working and making cups, you're going to have some bad cups um, for sure when you're working with them. So that's just part of it, and that's part of the process. And I am... Uh, going to hit this with a torch just a little bit. And then we'll let it set just a little bit longer. You can see that got quite a few of the bubbles. And uh, we'll let it set just a little bit more before we start. And when I'm working, everybody has their own ways of doing things. I like my tumbler to turn away from me uh, when I'm working. <laughs> But tonight we are going to be doing, I'll give you a sneak peek while we're waiting on the um, epoxy. Uh, we're going to be doing a swirl. Then we're going to put leaves on it and make it a peekaboo. And I may do the peekaboo part when we do the, get our leaves on it. I may do the outside as a wood grain. But these are the colors that we're going to be using. And they are all just beautiful, beautiful colors. These are all from um, Glitter Drops and Sparkle Pops. Um, we've got uh, Fall Leaves Chunky. And we've got uh, Happy Chunky. And then we've got um, Thankful chunky and campfire chunky so I think it's going to turn out to be a really pretty tumbler and I think it'd be pretty to have the leaves and then have the outside uh, to look like a wood grain because then it will look like the the base of the tree and then the leaves falling down beside the tree so that's what I've come up with right now so I'm gonna hit this one more time before we epoxy it and this is going to be a short live. It's not going to be a long one because all we had to do was uh, put the epoxy on. And I did go back and put a couple of uh, knots on this. Uh, let me stop it so I can show them to you. Uh, I meant to do them while we were doing the live, but this is one of them. 
and then uh, let's see right here is the other one so I just put a couple on it and I, like I said I fully intended to do them when I was doing the live and I just forgot so it happens and this I will pull the tape so you can see it I always pull my tape uh, within just a few minutes of doing my cup now this cup is totally a different color than the one that I did um, that I showed you before and then there was some that I did it on the weekend and there were some that wanted to see this technique so then this is the one that I did rather than doing two just alike I thought well we'll do it a little bit different and that way they can see what the different colors produce but I'll show you it before we cut off the line that way some of you that didn't see it can um, look at it and see the difference in the the colors that the inks make uh, that one was done with teak wood and this one was done with espresso and you can keep working with one color and I know I had a person ask me well how many colors did you use when you made it well I only used the one color it's just the difference in working the ink that makes it look like I use several colors. And this one's really going to be pretty. And like I said, this cup is for sale. So if you know somebody that's wanting one for Christmas with a uh, design on it, it can have any kind of quote. If it's um, for a man, if, it's, if he's a hunter or he just likes the outdoors, uh, mountains, camping, whatever. And then I always drizzle some epoxy on my cup. Y'all have seen me do this many times. And I always leave a little bit so if I start seeing any fish eyes, I can deal with them. Uh, sometimes when you're doing... Uh, working with inks it will repel and um, you'll have fish eyes start forming and if mine does that then I just take my popsicle stick and I'll dip it into some of the epoxy here and just take a big hunk of it and drop it right in the center of that fish eye and you can do that while it's still fresh and moving and you can work on it that way, but after it gets hard, yeah, you can't do it that way. Now I'm popping bubbles. And then if you have any spots that are not bubbles, that may be um, grit or dust or something that's on your cup, um, when you, before you do your uh, decal you go back and you can actually sand it and then put that last coat on and it'll help take care of that so now I'm gonna pull my tape uh, when I do my tape I always let me see how I fold that back and it makes it easy to find and easy to have something to pick up to pull it And then where your tape overlaps, you usually always have a spot that uh, you have to wipe. And I just take my baby wipe and wrap it around my finger. And then just wipe it off. Now we'll pull the bottom. Again, you can see where I folded that tape down so I'd have something that'd be easy for me to lift up when I got to the point that I was ready to pull the tape. And if it's new people watching, usually if there's new people, they'll want to know why I tape the top and the bottom. Number one, I like the look. And number two, the main reason I do the bottom is because if a customer drops their cup, 
most of the time it's going to hit on that bottom and it most of the time will crack the epoxy where if you leave it stainless around the bottom if it hits it may bend it but it's not going to crack the epoxy most likely that doesn't mean that it won't they could drop it a certain way that it would hit and crack it but most of the time it does not and as far as the top i do the top just because i like it and it does make it easier to work with your glitter if you're using chunky glitter especially um if you've got it around the bottom like that um let me see i'm gonna set this out of the way let me get it out of the way and then i'll show you the other one that i did and I will show you uh, a cup that I glue, but it's a totally different color. And this one I did a little bit different technique, but this one was much easier, much easier. 